All right, back in the basement again today to talk about some training stuff that's really helped me, a borderline depth squatter. I know you're probably all shocked to hear it, but if you read my comments section, you watch my videos, you know I'm cutting it kind of close, if not high in some cases. Now, thankfully, I haven't been red lighted for depth in a competition much. I think it's like maybe two times or so, but it is something that happens and it is something I'm consistently worried about because I know based off my mobility and my squatting style, it is pretty close. So one of the things that I found has really helped me dial it in is the use of a box. Now, when I say box squats, I think I'm not alone where a lot of people think west side conjugate style box squatting where, you know, really wide stance, toes angled really far out, you're sitting down and back and in some cases rocking on a box. You're not supposed to rock the box, but I've seen some box rocking in my days. Um, but I'm talking about more as a reference point. And I find even for, you know, unequipped lifters, because oftentimes people say box squats only really good if you're doing equipped because you're sitting down and back and mimicking a movement pattern if you're wearing gear. I've found for a raw lifter, for me and depth, it has been one of the best tools in order to make sure that I'm squatting better and improve my own mechanics overall. So there's two ways I like to institute a box in my own training. Number one would be as its own movement. So I typically squat more than once a week. I'm gonna have a comp squat probably early in the week and then later in the week I'll have like a secondary squatting movement. Sometimes it's safety bar squats, sometimes it's high bar, sometimes it's tempo work, but I really like to use box squats here because one of the things that it lets me do is have a reference point of exactly how low I need to go. So I'll get an adjustable box, I'll set it up, and I've done this in the past where I know exactly what setting on the box I need to hit in order to hit depth, and I'll leave that there and squat to that box. Now oftentimes when I'm squatting, my goal is to kind of squat down onto it and not back onto it because I don't want to change my movement pattern too much. If you don't have that box there and you're sitting too far back, you could fall over potentially but I do like it there because I do find that it reminds me to hinge at my hips a little bit more, which is a problem that I have in general as well. So again, it improves my overall mechanics, but also having a reference point of how far down I need to go to know I hit depth and know that if I hit it, then I'm at depth has been a really great tool for me to use. Now, in some cases, I'll do touch and go stuff. In some cases, I'll actually sit on the box, but I won't put my full pressure and body weight and the barbell weight on the box itself. I wanna remain tight and have that tension in my body. But again, using that as a reference point has really helped because when I go back to normal squatting, I can mimic that movement pattern and mimic that depth feel of I know where I need to be. Now, without the box, you can still hit depth, obviously, but for someone who struggles, I think I'm not alone again when I think of when I'm squatting, I feel like I'm hitting depth, but then I go back and watch it on film, especially at which angle you're filming, and it's hard to tell from that viewpoint. And I don't wanna film from the side all the time because it's not as good to repost. And also, if I'm squatting high, that kind of puts me in a bad mood. So again, having that box there to know I'm hitting depth also improves my overall well-being and mindset during training. So that's one use case as a dedicated movement. Another use case, like I implemented today, is what I'll do is I have my comp squat, as I mentioned I typically do at the beginning of the week, but I'll use a box as part of warm-ups. Now I still do my normal mobility routine that I've been doing, which truth be told, needs to be improved. It's not the best, but I'm short on time, so I come down and do what I can to get ready. But what I found is having a box as part of warm-ups really helped because it's really an eye-opener. And you'll actually see on my first set with just the bar, my first rep, I don't even touch the box, I'm that tight. So it kind of gives me the opportunity to figure things out, get my feet in the right position, get my movement tracking in the right position. And as I add weight, and as I start to improve upon those things, I get better and better about hitting depth. And again, in these cases, I'm going down and trying to tap that box. Now, as part of some of my warm-up, what I will do is I will sit down and back on the box because in that position with a lightly loaded barbell, I feel like I can really get a good stretch in my hips and my knees and push them out. And I'll sit there for a couple of seconds and just kind of get that stretch in. A lot of people use just kind of like pause squats in the hole as part of their warm-up. Again, with the box, it has helped me there. And I'll continue to use the box as part of warmups until I get to heavier working weight. So today, I think right before my top set, I move the box out. And again, as I already mentioned, the nice thing about this is, is my body and my mind are already programmed by that point from the previous work I've done on this day warming up and for what I've done the previous weeks. Again, to get that movement pattern right and get that depth right. And what I find is once I pull that box out, I'm able to hit depth better 
than if I didn't have the box there as part of warmups. Now, again, for this particular movement for a comp squat, it's not programmed specifically for box squatting, so I don't wanna use that on my top set. I wanna make sure that I'm doing what I need to, so I pulled the box out. But in some cases, if I want extra work, my back offsets, I'll throw it in there as well to get some extra work in if necessary. So again, what this helps me with is my overall mechanics, helping me hinge at the hips, and ensuring that I hit depth every time. And it's something I like to add in to ensure that I'm not getting red lighted at meets. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big. Woo!